bootleg. Romo pumps, throws, touchdown, Cowboys. Guns it inside. It's caught. Touchdown, Dallas. Everything about that was right. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Burmeister and welcome to Texas Stadium. Home base for the next 30 minutes as we answer a question that's come up a lot lately. Just who is Tony Romo? Well, there's no mystery surrounding the Cowboys star. It's one of the most recognizable logos in all of team sports. And even though he stumbled here against the Saints, no player's individual star has risen faster the second half of this season than Tony Romo's. Now, two months ago, he'd never thrown a pass in the NFL. Now he's one of the highest rated passers in the league, and he's led the Cowboys to a 5-2 and two record. He's all of a sudden a household name, but people are still wondering just where in the world did he come from? San Diego, California to be exact, where he was born in April of 1980, while his father was stationed there in the Navy. And Tony's a third generation Mexican American, but his parents grew up in Wisconsin. So when he was two, the Romos moved there to Burlington for good. It was there in that town of 10,000 people, located halfway between Milwaukee and Chicago, that Tony developed his passion for sports, a classic gym rat who just couldn't get enough. He snuck in rounds of golf before school when weather permitted, played pickup basketball with his teachers and coaches when it didn't. He excelled at golf and basketball throughout high school, but football and the position of quarterback became his true love. He combined talent with charisma to become the kind of leader that coaches craved and the type to which teammates gravitated. Yet colleges were largely unimpressed. He was only offered scholarships by Division II Mankato State and Division I AA Eastern Illinois. Romo chose Eastern, and by the time of his freshman year, he was the starting quarterback. By the end of his senior year, he was the best quarterback in school history. He earned the Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year Award three times, and following his senior season, became the first player in school and conference history to win the Walter Payton Award, given annually to the best player in Division I AA. But the 2003 draft came and went with no call for Tony Romo. Just how did a player with his talent and those accomplishments go undrafted? Here's Mike Mayock. Thanks very much, Paul. The reality of the NFL draft is that over 90% of the players drafted come from Division 1A schools. For example, last year, 255 players were drafted. Only 20 were from lower-level schools. So why wasn't Tony Romo drafted back in 03? Well, let's see. Production was pretty good. He was a Walter Payton Award winner. At the Combine, 6'2", 230, it wasn't about height and weight, and he scored a 37 on the Wonderlick. So he was certainly one of the more intelligent football players in the draft. Had to be a reason. Let's go to the videotape. Tony Romo, back at Eastern Illinois. Three-step drop, still understood how to manipulate coverage. He's trying to get the linebackers and the safeties to go to his right because he's coming back to his left. Drops it in the bucket over the linebacker between the corner and the safety. Tremendous touch. That's God-given, innate understanding of the football game. Cowboys, now a five-step drop. Up on his toes, looks, looks, late-breaking in route, about 22 yards down the field, arm strength and accuracy. That is a tremendous job. Split screen. One thing the scouts didn't like, lower delivery than you like, about a three-quarter delivery. Some of the teams knocked him for that delivery. You can't knock him for accuracy. Perfect pass over the shoulder of Witten. What a play. You can't knock him for athletic ability. You can't knock him for toughness. Romo back to throw. Here comes a late blitz. Romo breaks the tackle by Griffith. Steps up and throws complete over the middle to Creighton. Now, one thing is hindsight, as the pro scouts always say, is always 20-20. But there's an inherent weakness in the system. As one NFL general manager told me, if a small school kid like Romo gets a bad grade from an area scout, there's a good chance he won't be cross-checked by anyone above him. So there will always be a chance that Tony Romo or others like him will fall through the cracks. Now, once the draft is over, there's a mad scramble for free agents. As the story goes, Romo was on the phone with one NFL team when Jerry Jones called in on the other line. Why did Jerry Jones call in personally? Well, Sean Payton, his quarterback coach at the time, was an Eastern Illinois grad. Payton really wanted Romo, convinced Jones to get on the phone. Jerry Jones, the consummate deal maker, he cut the deal. They get Romo in camp. 
And the final irony in this day of salary cap craziness is that because they didn't have much money invested in the kid and because not many teams knew about him, they were able to keep him as a backup for three years, develop him, and now, four years later, because Parcells and Peyton agreed on him, they've got a heck of an NFL quarterback. Only two of the 13 quarterbacks selected in that 2003 draft are starting right now, Carson Palmer and Rex Grossman, though nine have started at some point in their careers. And that list includes Drew Henson right here in Dallas in 2004, while Tony Romo sat on the bench and watched. But now that he's finally on the field playing, developing and maintaining a good relationship with Terrell Owens is one of his many accomplishments. It's also one of the topics he'll discuss with Deion Sanders when we come back. How do you keep T.O. with Glenn? How do you keep all these guys happy? <laughs> Second and goal, and a busted play, and Romo throws it out to Owens, and it's caught on the left side of the end zone for a touchdown. Maybe it wasn't busted. Maybe it was a play fake and a half roll, and Owens got open, and Romo's got a touchdown, and Owens has three of them, and he walks over and hands the ball to a man in the stand. And Tony Romo hasn't had any issues connecting with Terrell Owens on or off the field. In fact, one of his many strengths is said to be his ability to mesh with all the different personalities in this Cowboys locker room. You know, Deion Sanders used to be one of those personalities, but now he's on our team. We brought him back here to Dallas to help us get to know their new quarterback. Tony Romo, I promise to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help, me, so help me prime. There you go. I'm going to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me prime. Well, let's go then, <laughs> all right? Romo throwing, touchdown. He's in the end zone. Caught, touchdown. You find yourself with the Dallas Cowboys, man. You're playing behind guys the likes of Bledsoe or Quincy Carter. What are you saying on the sideline, man? You're holding the clipboard. Are you optimistic? I've always been a guy kind of where I feel like if I work hard enough for an extended period of time, eventually start to go your way. So you say you just happen to be on the team at that time? I mean, I, I did. I mean, I wasn't, I really was, I was raw when I came into the right. NFL. I mean, but I you was... had raw talent. I'm pretty realistic about my talents, and so I just tried to work my butt off every day in the offseason, during the season. I needed to get to a point where it was more consistent. And Bledsoe back, looking left, pumps, and throws a quick out. It's intercepted. And it's going to be Tony Romo coming out at quarterback to take the team over. Romo back to throw. Airing it out deep over the middle. Caught it! Touchdown! Patrick Creighton and the Dallas Cowboys. I know you're sort of a recluse guy, so you don't hear everything going on around town, but when they put you in and you started, all the talk around the city, all in the barbershops. I remember going down to the barbershop, the guy's like, Fran, what you think about that Romo kid? Man, I'm like, man, I don't know. I need to see a little more of him. Were you confident at that point? Yeah, well, I mean, first off, I'm not sure that you were going to the barbershop, you know, I mean, that's, that, <laughs> you might be exaggerating a little bit. But I felt this year like I was ready. Throws a slant, Whitten, reaching out behind him, caught it. <laughs> He throws it in the left side of the end zone. Terry Glenn, touchdown, Dallas. Now, you're undrafted free agent from Eastern Illinois. You're starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Several weeks before that week seven, you could have rolled through the drive through at any fast food with your whole uniform on, man. <laughs> they wouldn't have known you. But now, you can't go anywhere. You're the starting quarterback of America's team. Has that set in yet? Nah, I, don't, I try not to think about it from, like, some outside perspective or anything. I mean, when you're playing the game, it's just, you know... Man, you told me you was going to tell the whole truth now. Hey, and I'm telling the truth. Now, hey, I, I understand... You haven't thought about you're the starting quarterback. Now, I understand what it means to the fans and everybody that's watching, but for me, it's still the game that you're playing. Romo, touchdown! I mean, I go to practice in the morning. I, I'm here all night. You know, I stay, I watch film, I go home, I eat, and then I really go to bed and wake up and do it all over again. What is the difference? You know, quarterback and the scout team at practice. No, you're right. You, 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 when you're in the huddle... It's not the scout team receivers. It's, it's T.O. is right there, man. <laughs> but I think that's the confidence. By working your butt off, you feel like you belong to be able to do that. You should be able to be successful in some way because you put so much time and effort in that you don't feel like it's this crazy big, you know, bigger-than-life kind of thing. It's still just football, and you're still just playing the game that you've always played. Caught it! Down the sideline at the five! Touchdown! Little quick fade out to Owen! He has got complete control of this offensive attack right now. How do you keep these guys happy, man? How do you keep T.O. 
When, Glenn, how do you keep all these guys happy? <laughs> You know, I talk to each one of them. I try and figure out what they're thinking. If they need you know, something out of me, just let me know, and yeah, I'll try and help you. Yeah, they need something out of you. They need the ball. They need the ball. Out of you. I'm saying, and, how do you keep these balls? And I ask them. I'm always t in their ear a little bit saying, hey, because for me, I'm a guy who's, if I see someone open, I'm going to throw the ball, whether it's the same guy 12 times in a row and, or 12 straight different people. They understand that I want them each to be successful. And Romo back, slant to the goal line, a great catch by Owens. No matter what you do, it's not easy. It's, it's sort of like having that, that father or that, that woman at home that just never satisfied, man. No matter what you do, you still come back to the same man who has that look on his face like he's never satisfied. Now, how is it playing for Bill Parcells? I actually don't mind just because he's competitive, so am I. He wants perfection when you're out there. And, you know, this game isn't without human error. And he's just testing you to see if you can handle it on Sunday when you make a bad throw. Can you come back on the next one and now get a first down on third and 12? Whitten caught the ball at the 33-yard line. What an absolutely perfect pass. You never need to make it bigger than it is. And that's the way to play at your best, is to go out there and do exactly what you did on Wednesday and Thursday. Now it's bigger, more people are watching everything. But if you can do it then, you can do it now. And just trust your instincts, trust what you've done, and go do it. Who is Tony Romo? You know, I like to think I'm a small town guy who grew up, went to a small school, came here, and now he's lucky enough to play a game that he loves and loves to compete. Well, you're a basketball player, man. You're a competitor. You like <laughs> one on one. Me and you, off season. Mm -hmm. No one in the gym, no cameras, one ball, me and you, one on one. What should I expect? Well, I'm going to spot you 10 points if we're playing to 11. <laughs> That's the quarterback I like. <laughs> Thank you, man. Hey, no problem. That was good. Go home. And when we come back, we take our getting to know Tony Romo right to the top. Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones sits down with us to share his thoughts on Tony's past, present, and future in Dallas. But I don't know when I've seen any player at any position uh, come in and make the kind of impact he has, uh, and then to have made it at such a sensitive position as quarterback is pretty impressive. Time. Fires deep down the middle of the field. Caught. Touchdown, Terry Glenn. Beautiful strike. 30 yards. He's going to swing out far side, and it's Glenn. 2-1 touchdown. Bootleg. Romo pumps, throws. Touchdown to Marion Barber. Just inside the goal line over the Sea and Cowboys. Bootlegs it out. Far side right. Romo looks. Pumps. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown. Four touchdown passes by Tony Romo. Here's a quick slant. Owens, 2-1, touchdown, Dallas. Quick slant to the left for Terrell Owens. Yes, when Tony Romo threw five touchdown passes on Thanksgiving Day, there wasn't a Cowboy fan happier than the one sitting right across from me, the Cowboy owner and general manager, Jerry Jones. Thanks for being with us. Good to have you at Texas Stadium and uh, in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And it was great to have him throw those five touchdowns on Thanksgiving Day. That's quite a traditional day for us. And mm -hmm. what better to happen than to have a young quarterback step out and have a game like that? Step out and have a huge game. And that leads to the first question. I think everybody's wondering how a free agent unknown came off the bench at midseason and really turn the season around, how did he do that? Well, first of all, the question always has been is how Tony would play uh, when it got loud or when the mm -hmm. competition was out there. Uh, he had had a college career, really excelled in college, uh, but when you're from a smaller school, uh, you get docked as far as your ability to play against uh, uh, real stiffer competition. Uh, with that in mind, Tony got the opportunity to spend some time in preseason. He got the opportunity to uh, uh, take snaps. Those are hard to come by in the NFL unless you're a number one draft pick. Before you were able to evaluate him during games, you had him around for about three and a half years on the bench. You didn't have a high pick invested in him. You didn't have a lot of money invested. What did you see in him that made you want to keep him around and develop him? His uh, savvy, his demeanor, uh, he uh, invariably, uh, anybody that spent any time around him, uh, he had certain confidence. Uh, he had a, a gamer uh, glow about him. Back in week eight, uh, when the decision was made to, to bench Drew and to bring Tony off the bench, at that point, you weren't so sure that was the best thing for this season. Yes. Uh, my read on our season from the time we started it 
was that if for whatever the reason we had to change quarterbacks in the middle or at some um, uh, juncture during the year mm -hmm. uh, that uh, a wheel had come off somewhere, a plan had gone awry. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the case. And uh, so uh, I know that you've got an advantage if you can have experience at quarterback. And we kind of loaded the wagons this year. Uh, we went after some offensive talent. Uh, we felt good about our defense. We haven't spent a number one pick on the offense in years and years and years around here. It's been all on defense. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be pretty sound on defense, then we probably had our best chance with a veteran quarterback. Couldn't have imagined, though, uh, if Drew Bledsoe wasn't in the game, somebody coming in and playing the way Tony Romo has. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I've seen any player at any position uh, come in and make the kind of impact he has uh, and then to have made it at such a sensitive position as quarterback is pretty impressive. Anybody who quarterbacks the Dallas Cowboys right now has a couple of unique relationships right away. Quarterback Bill Parcells is different. Quarterback Terrell Owens is also a different kind of situation. I want to start with, with quarterback and coach. It seems like Bill has taken upon himself to, to make sure he humbles him every week. Have you uh, enjoyed their interaction there? Well, enjoy is not the word for it because it's so serious, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, the facts are that Bill's style is to uh, especially not yet a let a young player get full of himself mm -hmm. and uh, to continually point out that uh, uh, you know there are a lot of hurdles to overcome and uh, so and and I think that's good coaching when you made the decision or when the organization made the decision to bring in such a green quarterback and you have a Terrell Owens who has some re relationship history with quarterbacks that's not so great did you worry about that one at all no uh, I look at it as though if you're gonna bring in a young quarterback then uh, a great time to do it is when you've got some great tools around him. Mm -hmm. uh, that quarterback receiver relationship where you've got real uh, skilled players uh, that do have experience, that'd be a tremendous advantage. And that's what he's got in Terrell Owens. That's what he's got in Terry Glenn. And really he has that in Jason Witten. Now that's a real advantage to a young quarterback. There's no negatives there. I think one of the reasons this story is so attractive to people, maybe who aren't even Cowboys fans, is that A, he came out of nowhere, but also B, he seems so real and so likable and such a, like such a normal person when he's being interviewed, when he's playing on the field, he's having fun, when it's just you and him at practice when no one's watching. What's he like? Well, it's a, uh, it's a real pleasure because you, uh, football, uh, to have an appreciation for it and ex appreciation for competition is real important. Mm -hmm. He exudes that. Uh, he, he loves to compete. You can see that in him. Uh, you look at his background as a young as a young person, and it was all about uh, the competition in in any sport he got a chance to play in. If you're sitting in my shoes, that really is who you want to be around when you think of your future in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. I also believe you win more games with players right. like that. And finally, I know you have your finger on the pulse of your team as much as any owner in the National Football League. So the final question with that in mind, who is Tony Romo? I think Tony is, uh, uh, wants to make the play. Uh, uh, he wants to uh, get the ball in the end zone. And uh, he's on the offensive side of the ball. And it's hard to ask for a better uh, person uh, if you were trying to look inside. So um, I think uh, Tony is a guy that uh, wants to take it on his shoulders when he has an opportunity, but hopefully uh, he'll realize and does just how important that play is or that series is uh, or that game is. And so that something in him will let him be creative and let him use those skills, but be cautious with it because a lot of us, like millions of Cowboy fans, are riding on every throw he makes. And when we come back, we'll have our final thoughts on Tony Romo and also look ahead to the Cowboys' next game with the Falcons. When you consider what this story has become here at Texas Stadium, it's hard to imagine that only a few weeks ago, Romo was brought off the bench for two very simple reasons, to limit turnovers and create a spark with his mobility. Now, he's done each one of those things better than expected, but he's also provided a cool, a presence, and a confidence beyond what anyone could have predicted. And he'll need those qualities to overcome the physical challenges and the emotional roller coaster that every NFL quarterback faces. As that situation plays out, only then can we truly answer the question, who is Tony Romo? I'm Paul Burmeister.
Thank you for watching.